Let's go over how to remap a button in real time in Unity using the new user input system. Some may also call this rebinding the controls. This tutorial assumes you already know how to implement the new user input system to control an action in your scene. If you are not familiar with that step, please watch my previous tutorial which can be found in the description or you can click on the card in the upper corner. Now let's take a look at how to achieve a real time button remapping. I currently have my scene set up with a square which I am calling my player which has a particle system attached to it. I also have a UI button which I labeled rebind button. I currently have a script that plays the particle effect when I press the south gamepad button on my controller. If you are uncertain how to get an action to occur during a button press, please follow my previous tutorial about setting up the new user input system. Before moving on to the code, we need to make sure our event system is set up correctly. Click on the event system item in the scene tree and in the inspector click replace with input system UI input module. This updates the event system to work correctly with the new user user input system. It is time to get to the code you've all been waiting for. Create a new C Sharp script. In my case, I will name it Rebind Script. We need to add three additional namespaces to the script. Add UnityEngine.UI, UnityEngine.InputSystem, and UnityEngine.EventSystems. The UI namespace is so we can manipulate the text on our button. The input system namespace is needed so we can collect our user's actions and allow the rebinding to occur. The event system namespace is needed for us to wipe out the current selection of UI elements. If this doesn't make sense to you, don't worry. Once you see it used in the code, it will be more understandable. Now inside our class, we need three variables. The first is a serialized field private input action reference, which I'll call action to remap. This will allow us to select the action we want to remap in our inspector. You essentially need one of these input action references for each action you want to rebind. There are other methods of going about doing this, but this is the simplest method as of now. The second is a serialized field private text with the name button text. We are going to use this to store the text of our UI button, which we can update to display context messages. The third is a private input action rebinding extensions.rebinding operation variable, which I'll call rebinding operation. This variable will be used to store our rebinding operation method, and it will help with the garbage collection of the project by preventing a memory leak. With our namespaces and variables in place, it is time to create a method. I will use a public void method since I want to access this method via our UI button. I will name mine start rebinding. Something important to note with how the event system works in Unity is once a button is clicked, it is remembered and it is continued to be a considered a selected item. This is fine when you have a real menu set up with multiple buttons, however for this example this will cause issues. How we get around this is by this line of code, eventsystems.current.set selected game object parentheses and we put null in the parentheses. To be 100% clear, this line of code is only specifically needed for this particular tutorial setup. It is not possible to rebind an active action, so we disable the action we want to rebind, which is completed by action to remap dot action dot disable parentheses. I want to give feedback to the player to let them know it is time to press any button to continue the rebinding. To achieve this, use button text dot text equals press any button with quotation marks around this text. This will update the text on our button to display our message and will let the player know it is time to press a button for the rebinding. It is time to call the code that will allow us to achieve the interactive rebinding. Type rebinding operation equals action to remap dot action dot perform interactive rebinding parentheses. This is to store our rebinding method for later use and to activate the rebinding procedure. It has been stated in documentation to use declarations to help clarify the rebinding options. The first one we will use is dot on match wait for another parentheses with 0.1 f inside the parentheses. The reason we use this is we are giving the program 0.1 seconds to search for any other inputs that may be a better match before it commits to the current selection. Next we declare the rebinding is complete. Use dot on complete with parentheses and we need to add a parameter called operation. Use a lambda expression in curly brackets which we are essentially creating a method using this lambda expression. When dot on complete is called, it will run any code we need to finalize the rebinding operation. To give the player feedback about which button was selected for the action, we're going to have our button display the button name of our rebinding. Inside our curly brackets, type button text dot text equals input control path dot to human readable string parentheses and inside these parentheses action to remap dot action dot bindings brackets with a zero inside of the bracket 
brackets dot effective path and then comma input control path dot human readable string options dot omit device and close it off with a parenthesis. I know that is a long chunk of code. The first part of the parentheses is getting the path of the button we have our action bound to and the second part is just telling the string to omit what the device the button is coming from. At this point the rebinding is almost complete. We just need to do some garbage collection maintenance. To do this type rebinding operation dot dispose parentheses. This will dispose of our rebinding operation which prevents a memory leak. We need to make sure the action is re-enabled since we disabled it earlier, which is done by action to remap dot action dot enable parentheses. We are completed with our lambda expression, and now for the last line of code, type dot start parentheses. We invoke this to start the rebinding to take place. With the code being done, we need to do the final scene setup. Create an empty object, and in my case, I'll call it don't delete. Assign the rebind script to our don't delete game object. On the script, we have two fields that need to be filled out: the action to remap and our button text. For these fields, select the appropriate references. As a note, the rebinding we have set up will currently only work for a button type rebinding. If this video gets enough likes and comments letting me know you'd like to see a further explanation for other control types, I will make a part 2. Go to the button object and assign the rebinding method to the onClick button method. As a reminder, it is important that the method was made public in the script or it will not show up. At this point, the process is completed and you can start your scene and see if it works. In my case, I press the south button and my particle system plays and a message displays in the console. Now when I click the UI button the message changes and I press a new button on my controller. It will display the new binding selection and you can see when I press the button I bound the action to it works. You can click the UI button again and rebind the controls even further. That is it for the tutorial portion but I hope you realize there are many possibilities beyond what I showed in this video. I hope this was useful in your game dev journey and if you learned something new or would like some other topic covered feel free to let me know in the comments. I will leave links to Unity documents that cover this topic and I will leave a link to the code found in this video. Thanks again for watching and if you made it this far in the video you are truly a legend. As always take care and stay safe.